Observing the dramatically opposed eating and drinking habits of our fellows, we might wonder whether we all share the same perception of taste. Can we, for instance, explain why we prefer a blonde or a dark beer? So now I will um, ask you to taste uh, this uh, paper. Yeah. So uh, on both sides. Yeah. And tell me what happened. Okay. Tastes like paper. Paper, okay. So in fact, this is PTC. So uh, it's PTC. an organic, yeah. So in fact, the scientific name is phenol Okay. And it's an organic compound that just tastes bitter. 25% of uh, the people don't taste it, and 75% of the people uh, have a kind of uh, bitter taste. Right. So as you are less sensitive to bitterness, you mm -hmm. can easier drink, drink beer or eat some bitter food. In fact, we all have a very different perception of taste. Uh, this is because, first of all, we don't have the same amount of taste buds on our tongue, depending on our gender, our ethnicity. Uh, also, depending on our mood and our age, uh, the sensor that are our taste buds will not be received as well by our brain. Depending on their gender, ethnicity and age, the number of taste buds individuals host on each square centimeter of their tongue can vary between 11 and 1100. Each bud helps perceive bitter, salty, sweet, umami, and sour taste. This explains that some individuals, rich in taste buds, can be very picky about food. So stop force-feeding your picky child. He or she might just be a super taster and will therefore particularly want to avoid bitter vegetables and meals that are too fatty or too sweet. A medium taster will be more easygoing, but will still prefer sweet to bitter food. A non-taster can eat and drink almost anything, fatty and spicy meals, as well as very sweet and bitter beverages. A non-taster will appreciate a dark beer, and a medium taster rather enjoy a blonde beer. A super taster will more likely stick to water, as alcohol irritates his or her sensitive tongue. Women are more likely to be tasters than men. They're particularly sensitive when pregnant and during menstruation. The taste perception also decreases with age. Factors such as our mood will also enhance the perceived taste. Uh, so this confirms the strong link between uh, our hormones and uh, our uh, perception of taste. This is what we call the hormonal fingerprint. So uh, first I will uh, measure your finger on the right hand, so I will ask you to put your right hand like that. Okay. So I measured your ring finger, now I will measure the index so that we can have exactly your uh, hormonal fingerprint. We can determine our hormonal fingerprint just by comparing our index and ring finger. If our index is shorter, we are testosterone driven. If our ring finger is shorter, we are estrogen driven. Yeah, so you have a, a very testosterone-driven uh, fingerprint. And what are your hobbies? Uh, I play Ultimate Frisbee and I am a DJ. Oh, Ultimate Frisbee. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> it's a team sport uh -huh. that you play with a Frisbee, obviously. And yeah. um, you have to throw uh, to get further into the field. You cannot run when you hold the Frisbee in your hands. So our hormonal fingerprint uh, has a direct impact on our taste ability, but also on our hobbies and vocation. For instance, people that are uh, more with a testosterone-driven uh, hormonal profile will uh, go for rugby, let's say. Uh, whereas people with a more estrogen-driven profile will go for gardening or sudoku. The exposure to different hormones while we're still a fetus determines our main personality traits and physical aptitudes. So our hormonal fingerprint has a direct influence on the job and hobbies we go for, and this independent of our gender. A contact sports player, for instance, will have a testosterone-driven profile. A web designer will be more estrogen-driven. Is there a connection between our job and hobbies and our eating and drinking habits? We conducted some research and yes, indeed, there's a link. It means that now we are able uh, to say, depending on your job, on your hobby, 
if you are a more a super taster, a medium taster, or a mildly taster. So for instance, a rugby man will very clearly be a mildly taster, a web designer a medium taster, and an entrepreneur a super taster. So our medium taster web designer can take a sip of a blonde beer, and our non-taster rugby man can fully enjoy a dark beer, from the first glass to the last warm drop. So the implications are very strong for the medical uh, community because now we know that super taster will avoid some uh, bitter vegetables and sometimes get into trouble and develop cancer. Uh, thanks to our research, we'll be able to find out that, for instance, uh, women entrepreneurs are more likely to be super taster. So we can directly contact them to do some prevention. Our uh, next steps will consist in uh, going on with the research to find more correlation, uh, for instance, between our hormonal fingerprint and our vision, the way we perceive uh, colors, the way we scent uh, food and drinks. So we'll probably come back with some uh, other major breakthroughs.